Nearly half of Tennessee inmates end up right back behind bars within three years after their arrest. That has led to a staggering rate of repeat offenders within our local jails. Five years later, a federal government website lists the project status as not started. No plant, just plans. Where has the money gone? If it was a time period beyond five years, would you feel good going home at night thinking, I'm doing everything I can to protect my officers? No. When Russ walked out to check his main barn in the morning, he found that the foundation had been lifted about six inches off the ground. A fine for not wearing your seatbelt in Tennessee is $10. Littering, a $50 fine plus court costs. The fine for Lee charged with six counts of animal cruelty, $2 per horse. As you're about to hear, Dr. Reach was quite open using the clinic's violation as an opportunity to address what he calls a bigger problem. Beyond this damaged fence, Christian's neighbor had no idea that the storm would bring with it a sense of closure. Any difference given the national context? In Tennessee, none. There is an active crime scene right now. There are actually two. And here's what we know right now. Just moments ago, I spoke with the lead investigator, and he told me right around 942 this morning is when a person entered armed with a handgun demanding narcotics. What's interesting, though, is Eastman released a news release kind of telling about what happened. But nowhere in that news release, which I'm looking at right now, does it even mention the chemical being released or the wastewater that was discharged into the river. You know, we could talk about the damage all that we want, but the visuals are what really take your breath away. I'm going to step out of the shot right now just to describe to you the story of the man that lives here right now, he and his wife. If you look up at the porch on the corner, he was standing at the edge right there when the tornado hit. He went and looked off his back porch, saw the funnel coming, then ducked back around the corner and saw all of the damage that you can now see behind me. A lot of crews out here right now between working on the trees, moving some cars out of the way. In fact, where the camera is right now, there was a car that was pushed off, flipped upside down. You can still see pieces of the car remain strewed along with the memories of this home right here. Every road that we turn on, we are finding these stories and we're going to bring you all those tonight. Sarah, when minutes can mean the difference between life and death, every second counts and we trust first responders to have that same sense of urgency. But public records detailing the morning of June 2nd in Greene County reveal something disturbingly. Green County EMS prides itself on response times. About 11 minutes anywhere in Green County. In the city went down from five minutes to less than four minutes. Well, I'm very confident. I met with EMS Director Robert Sane to question that confidence after learning about a specific incident. I had one call uh, about an incident that happened at one of the local hospitals. A meningitis patient who died during a delayed emergency transport. If this issue uh, uh, it's found to be true. I think heads should roll, including the EMS director and all involved. A 911 records request confirms EMS responded 35 minutes after the initial call. That morning, instead of getting to the patient in time, the concern was getting home on time. The crew refused to take an out-of-town trip that would have made them work over past their quitting time at 8 a.m. The result of two calls waiting 30 to 45 minutes to be ran. So you're saying that they actually refused to they, take the call? They, when basically, that is exactly what they did. I don't accept that from what the crew had told me. It's too long of a delay mm -hmm. for an ambulance to respond on any call. The crew that was supposed to go on the second call, the emergency transfer, had given us the excuse that they had to take care of babysitting that day. Well, one of them, I understand, I understood her reasoning perfectly. The other one, I did not. But Would that ever be an acceptable reason for an emergency call, though? Technically, no. Ultimately, it was another crew altogether that came on the clock and took the call. There's never a cut in the, in the care for the patient. That is the only reason that I could see not to terminate the employees that were involved in it. If this patient would have not been in a medical facility receiving care and they would deny that patient care, 
I would have terminated them. Instead, Singh gave three employees involved a written warning, stating if they refuse to run a call in the future, they will be terminated. The fourth employee, who took it upon himself to act as supervisor and call in the second crew, received just a verbal warning. All he had to do was notify the supervisor. The supervisor would have handled this, and this wouldn't have happened. The thing is, since that warning, Singh did end up firing that employee and another for their additional involvement in other incidents. Singh says although he learned a quicker response would not have prevented this patient's death. It's still too long of a delay. Right. And I admit that and I accept that. They messed up. They were punished. If you ever delay treatment of a patient or delay response to a call, you will be terminated. In law enforcement agencies across the nation, there are two lines of defense officers don't leave home without, a gun and a bulletproof vest. That might be my last line to go back to my family at the end of the shift. There's so many things in this day and time that can happen. Uh, it doesn't matter if you just get out at a convenience store, you walk into a school, there's just, it's a dangerous world. In Sullivan County, it's not surprising Sheriff Wayne Anderson requires every officer to wear their bulletproof vest. But what many may not realize, each of those vests have an expiration date. They deteriorate over the years because of perspiration, wear and tear. I asked a representative from Gauls, a company that sells bulletproof vests to break down what the five-year shelf life the National Institute of Justice places on body armor really means. Those five years is the absolute that they guarantee no failure from an impact of a weapon of the size that it's been certified for. After those five years, it's still viable probably, but it's not guaranteed. After that time frame, if something were to happen... If it's the chief, um, the count, county commission, whoever's making the decision takes that full financial responsibility. If it was a time period beyond five years, would you feel good going home at night thinking, I'm doing everything I can to protect my officers? No. In Greene County, the number of bulletproof vests outside of that five-year range is dramatically more than those that are. A risk Sheriff Pat Hankins learned the first time he took inventory. What we discovered is that we had 40 vests, 40 men that were wearing vests at this time that were out of date. 40 men? Yes. Sheriff Hankins says a majority of the vests aren't just a couple months or even a couple of years old. Try a decade or even more. The oldest vest I had was 16 years old. Is an officer currently wearing that vest? Yes, it is. And that is how it will remain. Two thirds of Greene County officers strapping themselves in bulletproof vests day in and day out that may or may not be effective until replacements arrive in about another month. We saw that statistic come alive during our visit to Greene County. It's 11 years old this month. See, you can see the date of issue. Right? One patrol officer agreed to talk with us, but for safety concerns, we've concealed his identity. When did you get this vest that you're wearing now? 2006. Now we're in 2014. How does it make you feel? I mean, every day in your line of duty, wearing a vest that is that old. It's a, it's a little bit disconcerting, especially when you have kids at home. There was only one person we could bring these serious concerns to for explanation. Former Sheriff Steve Burns, whose 16-year reign over the department ended in September. He spoke candidly on several occasions, but denied an on-camera interview. Burns emphasized, quote, I would never put a vest on an officer that I felt was unsafe, and said a lot of those vests are still in good shape beyond the expiration date. I mean, it's not a dishwasher that we're dealing with that has got a one-year warranty, and yes, it continues to work on. Who knows who's going to stand behind that vest and let someone shoot them after a year to find out if it does work. If the manufacturer tells me it's a five-year warranty, I believe the manufacturer. And last time you and I talked, you didn't deny that there very well could be and were vests that were between 10 and 16 years old. Burns said, quote, I didn't monitor them. I had a training officer that worked with my chief deputy. You're making it sound like we didn't do anything. That's just not true. Just because he wants to order 40 vests doesn't mean we didn't keep safe vests on our officers. Burns told me other departments may very well be in similar situations with expired vests. But a public records request revealed, not so. These five counties are all within the five-year range, and Carter County should have a handful of new vests by the new year. There's a federal grant designed solely to help provide bullet-resistant body armor for officers. As for Burns, the most recent time we can confirm he received that federal grant money for new vests was 2012. I feel it hadn't, hadn't been cut correctly, 
in the first place and uh, it should come to the belly button. And here's the top of the vest. Burns stands by what he said, that he never put an officer in danger. There's not a county or city around here can't afford a vest for their officers. I don't believe it. They can't afford not to buy them. In the midst of putting themselves in harm's way every day, it's a risk surrounding departments and Greene County moving forward are not willing to take. It shouldn't have never, never happened. And I hope that in my term as sheriff here that it never will happen.